In this video lecture, we're going to discuss the shapes of molecules and how we can figure out and predict the shapes of the molecules and the angles that different atoms are making in that particular molecule. So, so there's a there's a theory that we're going to use for predicting the shape of the molecule, and that theory is called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VESPER. In short, it's VSEPR. Uh, and the theory is very simple. What it simply states is that if you have pairs of electrons, especially in the outer shell, whether they are bonding pair of electrons or they are lone pairs that are just roaming around in the outer shell. So if they are a pair of electrons, then those electrons are going to repel each other. And they, if they repel each other, they are going to try to be as far away from each other as possible. So uh, atoms have electrons in the outer shell. Some electrons are bonding, some are not bonding. Uh, those that are not bonding are called lone pairs because they are not involved, they are not attached to any other atom, they are not bonded to atoms. Uh, those that are bonding are called bonds. Uh, they could be single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds or lone pairs, the outer, completely full outer orbitals or uh, electrons that are not involved in bonding. So, so you can have all these types of electrons, uh, electron pairs in the outer shell and they are going to repel each other. Single bonds have the least force of repulsion, they exert the least force of repulsion because they only have one pair of electrons in them. A double bond has two pairs of electrons, so there are a total of four electrons grouped together, so, so they have more force of repulsion, they can exert more force of repulsion. Triple bonds have even more force of repulsion. And lone pairs, because they are not bonded to any other atom, no other atom is attracting them, so uh, they, they, their negative charge is very concentrated, so they exert a very large force of repulsion. So remember, lone pairs uh, in uh, molecules would exert the maximum force of repulsion. So as an example, I'm going to uh, uh, show you what a, what a lone pair is. So I'm going to draw a Dorian cross diagram of a water molecule. So this water molecule over here has oxygen. Oxygen has six electrons in its uh, valence shell. So there's six electrons in the valence shell. And it needed two, so it ended up sharing, getting one electron from hydrogen and another electron from another hydrogen. And they ended up sharing electrons. So as you can uh, see in this molecule, uh, this oxygen ha is making two bonds. So there's there's a pair of electrons bonded, uh, forming a covalent bond over here, and there's another pair of electrons that's also bonding, and they are lone pairs of electrons. There are two electrons over here, two electrons over here, and these these are called lone pairs, electrons in the outer shell that are not doing anything. So what I can do is I can write oxygen like this. So there's an oxygen in the middle. It's forming a bond with one hydrogen and it's forming another bond with another hydrogen and plus this oxygen has lone pairs and there are two lone pairs in the outer shell so oxygen in total has four electron densities a group of electrons over here in this bond a group of electrons over here in this bond and there are lone pairs of electrons over here and the lone pairs of electrons over here and remember Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory states that all of them are going to repel each other. This bond will, would be repelling these lone pairs over here. The electrons in this bond would be repelling the lone pairs over here. These lone pairs would be repelled by the electrons in this bond. So all the pairs of electrons in the outer shell are repelling each other. Now similarly, I'm trying to draw the Dorian cross diagram of nitrogen fluoride where one nitrogen is bonded to three fluorines. Nitrogen has five electrons in its outer shell so there there's one lone pair and it shares three electrons with three fluorines and fluorine in return shares one electron with the nitrogen and in this way nitrogen gets gets its three electrons nitrogen had five valence electrons and it needed three electrons and fluorine had seven electrons it shared one so it's left with the uh, six electrons so there's six electrons remaining for each fluorine so those are represented by crosses and as you can see uh, if you look around the nitrogen atom it has one bonding pair of electrons over here one bonding pair of electrons over here one bonding pair of electrons a single bond over here and it has one lone pairs and each fluorine atom has one bonding pair of electrons and it has three lone pairs in the outer shell. So there's six total electrons that are not involved in bonding. So if I try to draw the uh, 
draw or rewrite the nitrogen uh, fluoride molecule, it's going to be nitrogen is bonded to C fluorines. So that's one, that's two. And there's a third one, and nitrogen has a lone pair. Fluorine also has lone pairs, it has three lone pairs, it has six electrons that are not doing anything. So this is a Lewis structure that I'm drawing showing clearly how many bonds this is making. So fluorine has a total of three lone pairs. Now what's going to happen is that all these electrons are going to repel each other. So nitrogen has a bond over here, a bonding pair of electron over here and a bonding pair of electron over here and a lone pair over here and all these Four electron densities, the electrons over here, electron density over here and over here and this lone pair over here, they're going to repel each other. Another important point that I'm going to tell you is that shape is determined by the force of repulsion on the central atom in whatever molecule. For example, this first molecule, water, hydrogen is not doing anything. Hydrogen is not going to determine the shape of a water molecule. It's oxygen that's going to determine the shape of the water molecule, oxygen is going to decide where this hydrogen goes and where would it keep this hydrogen. So the shape of the molecule is always determined by this, by the arrangement of electrons around the central atom. Similarly, fluorine in this molecule is not going to determine the shape of this molecule. The shape of this molecule will be de determined by nitrogen. Nitrogen is going to decide where this fluorine is going to be, where this fluorine is going to be and where this fluorine would be kept. So the shape is always determined by the repulsion around the central atom, the repulsion of pairs of electrons around the central atom. Now, these molecules that I've drawn over here, these are not the actual shapes. Uh, this is just a simplified version of the dot and cross diagram that I drew over here just to figure out how many lone pairs and how many bonding pairs of electrons were there in the molecule. So now we're going to discuss how we're going to figure out uh, the shape of a molecule depending on how many bonds and how many lone pairs that particular molecule has. I'm now going to start off with the simplest molecules. Uh, the simplest molecules, are, uh, the first case, they're going to have two electron densities. So for example, there's a molecule of beryllium chloride. Now beryllium chloride has just two CLs bonded to it. So if there are only two CLs bonded to it, and the electrons in this bond would be repelling the electrons in that bond. So these electrons would try to stay as far away from each other as possible. So that basically means that the angles that the bonds are going to make are going to be 180 degrees. So the angles between the bonds would be 180 degree and this shape would be called, it's going to be called a linear shape because the chlorines would be, uh, the chlorine and the beryllium and this other chlorine would be would be present in a straight line. So this is the first shape of a molecule. So just to uh, clarify this point again, imagine if beryllium had this shape where the two chlorine atoms were on one side of beryllium. Now, since the electrons in the bonds are repelling each other, so this shape would not be possible. It would not, uh, beryllium chloride would not exist in this shape. So this is an incorrect shape. The correct shape is, is this one because the reason is that the electrons in this bond and the electrons in this bond, they would not be so close together to each other since they are repelling each other. And this force of repulsion is going to push this CL in the opposite direction. It's going to push, the C, push, push this particular CL and make it move to the other direction. So this CL would end up on the other side of beryllium and it's not going to exist on this side. So this is how the shape is determined. So this is the first scenario. The first scenario is if there are two bonding electron densities uh, or simply two electron densities, one over here and one over here, uh, then the shape would be linear and it's going to be 180 degree, the angles would be 180 degrees. Similarly, we can come up with other examples. For example, if you have a molecule of CO2, CO2 has a double bond. It's making a double bond with oxygen on one side. And on the other side, it's also making a double bond with another oxygen atom. So again, you have two electron densities. And remember that a double bond should be considered as one electron density because the electrons in a double bond are grouped together. So, so these electrons are bunched or grouped together. So they're going to repel the electrons in this double bond 
So they're going to be as far away from each other as possible because of the mutual repulsion. So again, the angles in this molecule are going to be uh, the angles are going to be 180 degrees. So the angle would be 180 degrees, and the shape is going to be linear. And let's do one more example uh, so I can come up with a molecule of uh, HCN where H is making a single bond with C but C on the other hand is making a triple bond with nitrogen. And uh, again think of the triple bond as one electron in C because the electrons are grouped together. So the triple bond is going to repel this single bond so they're going to be on opposite sides of carbon. They can't be close together because of the mutual repulsion. This triple bond is going to push this bond on the on the complete opposite side of this carbon and again the angles would be between the bonds the angles are going to be 180 degrees and the shape would be called linear.